Welcome to the House of the Lord. This is Reformation Sunday, and our service theme, Dear Christian Friends, One and All Rejoice. Good morning. We welcome all of you to God's house this morning on this special Sunday, Reformation Sunday. That too is one of my favorite Sundays to think of the great blessings that have been handed down to us from the Reformation. The theme thus is one of the first hymns in the first Lutheran hymnal, as you've heard before. Back in um, 1524, the first Lutheran hymnal, everybody remember how many hymns were in the first hymnal? Eight. Very good. You get an A today. <laughs> Very good. So this, Dear Christians, One and All, Rejoice was one of those first eight hymns. So today's theme, as mentioned already, these meaningful words, Dear Christians, One and All, Rejoice. We welcome all of you on this special Sunday. Also, we welcome our viewers online. May God bless our worship for our good and to our great God's glory. So we invite the congregation to arise and we'll join in the responsive reading of the invocation on page three. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, who took our hell that we might have his heaven, in the name of the Holy Spirit, who opened paradise by teaching us the just shall live by faith. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not loved you with all my heart. In what I have done and left undone, I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved others as you command. For this I deserve your punishment, now and forever. I am sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I beg for your mercy. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us. Cleanse me from my sin, release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit to amend my sinful life. The congregation may be seated as we begin on page 11 to 13. And we notice at the top of the page, responsive prayer for reformation. Lord, our refuge and strength, we gather to worship and praise you for your ongoing work of reformation in your church. You alone give us life and breath and every good thing. You alone created us for your glory and fellowship. You alone sustain us through, our, through your word and sacraments. You alone grant us the certain hope of heaven for that Lord, to you alone be glory. And we sing toward the bottom of the page. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice with exaltation singing and with united heart and voice and holy rapture singing proclaim the wonders god has done how his right arm the victory won how dearly it has cost him god of grace in unfathomable love you pitied us us sinners, and sent your Son as our substitute to deliver us from sin, guilt, death, darkness, and despair. No works or worthiness, no decisions or contributions of our own could ever make right what we did wrong in your sight. We are beggars, 
pleading humbly for your mercy, your mercy and compassion, yet confidently in view of your promises, promises fulfilled in our Savior Jesus Christ. For your grace, Lord, to you alone be glory. As bound in Satan's chains I lay, death brooded darkly o'er me. Sin was my torment night and day. In sin my mother bore me. Yet deeper and deeper still I fell. Life had become a living hell. So firmly sin possessed me. By your grace, you sent your spirit to call us to repentance. Your power for gospel rescued us from rebellion and fills us with faith in you, the true and living God. We apologize for our quick and common tendency to put our faith into empty objects that cannot help or save us. And despite ourselves, we thank you for turning us back to yourself and convincing us that you are our firm foundation for now and eternity. For saving faith, Lord, to you alone be glory. But God beheld my wretched state before the world's foundation. And mindful of his mercies great, he planned for my salvation. A father's heart he turned to me, sought my redemption fervently. He gave his dearest treasure. By your grace, we are heirs of your eternal word and trustees of the inspired scriptures through which you proclaim your saving truth to every generation. By the scriptures, you overthrew the darkness of those who perverted your teachings and restored to your church the message of salvation by grace alone. Grant us your blessing in every age to always hear and obey your word in all its fullness, truth, and purity. For the Holy Scriptures, Lord, to you alone be glory. He spoke to his beloved Son, it's time to have compassion. Then go, bright jewel of my crown, and bring to all salvation. From sin and sorrow set them free, slay bitter death for them that they may live with you forever. Almighty and eternal God, you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to take our place under the demands of the law and endure the just punishment for our sins. You raised him from death in glorious splendor, and for his sake you richly and daily forgive sins. He is grace personified, the only object of saving faith, the Word incarnate, our perfect Redeemer, who has fully com completed the work of our salvation. May we never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom, Lord, to you alone be glory. 
the full will shed my precious blood me of my life bereaving all this i suffer for your good be steadfast and believing life grow from death the victory won my innocence shall bear your sin and you are blessed forever. We invite the congregation to arise as we join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And remain standing to sing. Now to my Father I depart. The Holy Spirit sending and heavenly wisdom to impart my help to you extending. He will a source of comfort be, teach you to know and follow me and in all truth will guide you. Our first scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 3, beginning with verse 16. And here we see reason for rejoicing. What strength! What a strong faith God gave to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. May our joy in this awesome example strengthen us in our resolve, in spite of persecution, any persecution, stand for the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you about this matter, since our God, whom we serve, does exist. He is able to save from the blazing, fiery furnace. So he may save us from your hand, your majesty, but if he does not, you should know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue, 90 foot golden statue, by the way, that you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage and the expression on his face changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said to heat the furnace seven times hotter than it was usually heated. He ordered some men who were soldiers from his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to throw them into the blazing fiery furnace. So these men were bound in their coats, their pants, their turbans, and their other clothing, and they were thrown into the middle of the blazing fiery furnace. Because the, king of, because the king's order was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot, those men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were killed by the intense heat of the, furnace, of the fire. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had been tied up, fell into the blazing fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was startled and immediately stood up. He said to his advisors, didn't we throw three men who had been tied up into the middle of the fire? They answered the king, certainly, your majesty. He said, 
look, I see four men who are untied and walking around in the middle of the fire, unharmed. What is more, the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing fiery furnace. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the middle of the furnace. The satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the royal advisors gathered together and looked at these men. The fire had no power over their bodies. Not a hair on their head was singed. Their robes were not damaged, and the smell of fire had not stuck to them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and saved his servants, who trusted in God and ignored the king's command. They gave up their bodies and did not pay homage or worship any god except their God. This is the word of the Lord. We invite the congregation to turn to Psalm 46 in the front of the hymnal. Psalm 46, as you may know, is the basis for Luther's writing the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. What, a, what reason to rejoice to have the Lord Almighty with us and the God of Jacob as our fortress. is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. We turn our attention to the second reading, which is uh, also serving as our sermon text for today, 
Revelation 14, beginning with verse 6. Then I, that's the apostle John, of course, saw another angel flying in, in the middle of the sky. He had the everlasting gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the sky, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. The word of the Lord. And we invite the congregation to arise for the gospel reading found in Mark chapter 13, beginning with verse 5. Here Jesus speaks of signs of the end times. And notice one of those signs is that the gospel will be spread to the whole world and then the end will come. Jesus began by telling them, be careful that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I am he and will deceive many. Whenever you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. Such things must happen, but the end is not yet. In fact, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. But be on your guard. People will hand you over to councils and you will be, and you will be beaten in synagogues. You will stand in the presence of rulers and kings for my sake as a witness to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. Whenever they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand what you should say. Say whatever is given to you in that hour, because you will not be the one speaking. Instead, it will be the Holy Spirit. And we, and the congregation may be seated as we continue with hymn 640, God's Word is Our Great Heritage, 640. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. As we noted, God's word we wish to ponder this morning is taken from Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Let's uh, read together this verse. Then I saw another angel flying in the middle of the sky, he had the everlasting gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. This is the word of our great God. In Christ Jesus, our one and only Savior, my dear friends, 
Can you think of anything else other than our great God that is from everlasting to everlasting? No beginning, no end. As a contrast, I heard recently of a 99-year-old woman who still lived at home, sharp as a tack, still driving her car. In fact, she drove to Lake Mills to have lunch with a niece. But as we all know, no matter how old a person becomes, there's a beginning, and unless Jesus returns first, there will be an end. So we may not think of anything else, and we won't, but our text reminds us there is one other thing. It's the gospel. It's the word of God, the message of salvation. So let's together praise God for the everlasting gospel on this Reformation Sunday. It survives persecution, and it's for everyone. We read, Then I saw another angel. You know Revelation is filled with pictures. Angel means messenger. So there have been countless messengers throughout the history of the Christian church who have been part of this, part of the fulfillment of this picture, presenting the everlasting gospel. Notice he's flying in the middle of the sky. Satan and the wicked... Uh, operate in darkness. They want to hide their wicked deeds. However, not our God. His messengers are bold and courageous, are public, and trying to help everybody hear the message that everybody might believe it. He's carrying the everlasting gospel. Now, my friends, these words may remind us of a common phrase at least I think it's, it may be common. And that's the words of a world view. A mindset that people have. How they view, view life, how they view the world. I was reminded by a professor who had a Bible class at St. Paul's years ago. And the words we just sang at the end of this psalm, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, from everlasting to everlasting, presents us with the same worldview that's conveyed by these words, everlasting gospel, and for you and me who believe it. What a contrast we have between, in the worldviews between believers and unbelievers. For example, believe, unbelievers, I don't know if you've ever had somebody, an unbeliever, tell you this, but I have. You Christians are weak. You need a crutch. You need a God to lean on. They think they're so strong. But the Apostle Paul says it right in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11, doesn't he? When I am weak, that's when I'm strong because that's when we have, as Psalm 121 brings out, verse 2, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And I feel so blessed. I think you do too. That we have the Lord to lean on, to trust in every day, to answer our prayers every day, to help with whatever challenges we have every day. We're so blessed to have the worldview we have. And of course, our Bibles bring this out. God who knows the heart says about unbelievers, there is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. No peace. However... I just love these words from Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. The preacher at our area Reformation service had a neat illustration, I thought. Peace with God through Jesus. Harmony as a child of God 
through Jesus over and over again. I thought it said it all. And of course, dear friends, throughout history, Satan wants to wipe out Christianity. He wants every Bible burned. He wants every precious soul whom God loves to go to hell. Can you believe it? In the early Christian church, ten times Roman emperors persecuted Christians to one extent or another. Some of them wanted to wipe out Christianity and Christians were put to death in most horrible ways. So the devil tries to wipe Christianity out. God in turn uses the persecution as blessings. Can you imagine people shedding their blood, losing their lives for Jesus? But this is what the Christian historians say. And applying to us, there is no armchair Christianity. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. People had to wake up. People willing to, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, people willing to, to lose their lives for their God rather than deny him. Because the Romans wanted everybody to worship the emperor. We believers worship only one king. His name is Jesus. So many were put to death. And of course, the gospel goes on. The devil tried to wipe it out, wipe out Christianity. It only grew because of the bravery and wonderful gift of faith God had given those early Christians. Then, of course, in, in the 1500s, can you imagine being taught? You want forgiveness? Ten bucks. Buy an indulgence. You think you can get to heaven? you got to live a good life. Both lies. And because of those lies, Martin Luther was reading his Bible. And on October 31st, 1517, up went the 95 Theses. No, not to start a Lutheran church. To debate the truth of the Word of God. And those theses spread throughout Europe within a short time to open people's eyes. You can't buy forgiveness. You can't earn forgiveness. So then that resulted in 1521, the diet of worms. No, not a diet of food. In this it means a gathering. So a gathering in Worms, Germany. And Luther stands before the most powerful people in the world at that time. Emperor Charles V and a high official from the church at that time. Luther attends this gathering hoping he gets to defend the word of God. But Charles V wasn't interested in that. He asked two questions. Maybe you remember them. Are these your writings? Will you recant? Luther is shocked. He came to defend the word of God. And perhaps you remember, he asked for time. He spent the night in prayer. And just like we read, God gave him the strength and the words to say that I love to share every Reformation service because it's my hope and prayer that the Holy Spirit gives to all of us and me too the boldness, no matter what our situation is. We stand up for Jesus. So what did Luther say when, do you recant? He responded, unless you can show me from the word of God that what I have written is false, my conscience is bound. I cannot and I will not recant. God help me. Here I stand. His life was on the line. He was regarded as an outlaw by both church and state. Anybody could kill him, and in their minds they would be serving God. By the grace of God, he had a good leader, Frederick the Wise, had him kidnapped and hid him for three months. What did he do in those three months at Wartburg, the Wartburg Castle? Translated the Bible 
into the language of his people so they could read for themselves what the word of God says. Try reading the whole New Testament in 90 days. He translated it from the Greek, the original language, and it was a great blessing to the German people speaking, the German speaking people. Did you know the church didn't want anybody to have a Bible? Not in their own language, they're supposed to be in Latin, who, who can understand Latin, but perhaps the college graduates in Lincoln, excuse me, in um, England, a man by the name of Tyndale transla translated the Bible into English. You know what happened to Tyndale? They burned him at the stake for translating the Bible into the language of the people. How the devil wants to wipe out Christianity and the word of God with persecution and with lies. Jesus' words are so true. We got to be on the ball. We got to know our Bibles or we can be led astray. God help us. And is there still persecution today? You perhaps know. Do you know it's to this extent? 57 countries. It's dangerous just to be a Christian. Some are just harassed. Some lose property. Some lose their lives. Some, like this pastor, he's got his face covered because for his own safety, it's Pastor Rajiv in India. Ever since the new ruler took over in, in India, persecution has really intensified there for Christians. So this Christian pastor was thrown into to jail for being a pastor. But isn't it interesting how God works? Just remember how the Apostle Paul was in, under house arrest for his faith? And the Bible tells us that all the guards had learned about Jesus. <laughs> and so these incredible pastors who are not afraid to stand up for Jesus in jail are teaching all the inmates about Jesus. God has a plan to spread his word. They are all fulfillments of this angel flying in midair with the everlasting gospel. Dear friends, do we take our faith for granted? Do we take it for granted that by the grace of God we know we're not saved by our works, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags? Do we take for granted those treasures passed down to us from the Reformation, saved by grace alone, faith alone, scripture alone, in Christ alone? I think we may. Do we forget, still today, some are dying rather than denying Jesus as their Savior? Are we remembering these fellow believers in prayer? We just go nonchalantly on our merry way and enjoying our lives and don't give them another thought, not even a prayer for them. I think we easily fall into those sins, don't we? And we have to pray just like the psalmist teaches. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. We've all sinned and deserve God's wrath and punishment. But by the grace of God, there's the gospel. What comes to your mind when you hear the word gospel? To me, I think it's not clearly understood. So I appreciate the reference to the everlasting gospel. And the word that is translated gospel, the Greek word is actually put into English in the name of our church. Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church. And when you tear that Greek word apart, it means good news. Gospel. <laughs> One friend of mine said, we should just drop the word of evangelical. Nobody understands it. <laughs> oh, no. We've got to remember what it means. In some Christian churches, the good news is not there, sadly. But by God's grace, it's here. Good news. So we don't have to rely on the on the radio or the TV or cell phones to find some good news. We have it right in front of our eyes. Praise the Lord. 
And if you have a challenge, like I'm afraid some people do, with remembering what gospel means, remember the gospel in a nutshell. John 3.16, for God, there's the G, so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, there's the O and the S, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, there's the P, but have eternal life, there's the E and L. I hope, my friends, we all remember those beautiful words, gospel, evangelical, good news. If you'd like the Greek, it's oi angalizo. Don't you get excited to hear a Greek word once in a while? So this verse reminds us of the familiar words that underscore the message of the Reformation. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. Even the gift to believe is not from us. It's from God. It's, it's a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. As the hymn writer puts it, all we can boast of is in the cross of Christ I glory. So praise God for the everlasting gospel. It survives persecution, all the devil's attempts to wipe out every Christian and every Bible failed because God keeps his promises and it's for everyone. Look at the last words of verse 6. The everlasting gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, that's unbelievers by the way, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. This underscores the heart of our great God. He wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So it goes out to every tribe, language, people, and nation. And he said with a loud voice, loud enough for everyone to hear, huh? All the different ways the everlasting gospel is going out today with the internet, with Comunicando Cristo and Facebook and and tell the English version of Comunicando Cristo. And what's the message? Fear God and give him the glory. Interesting word, that word fear. For you and me, it's a good word. As it said in Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. So loving the Lord, respecting him, want to do everything we can for his glory is packed in to that word because we believe the gospel, the good news. And those who don't believe, they ought to take heed what Jesus had to say in Matthew 10. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So fear God and give him the glory because the hour of his judgment has come. You see, dear friends, judgment comes early, not just on judgment day, doesn't it? We don't, none of us knows it can come today or like Pastor Cook said, in two hours or two weeks or two years. The important thing is that we all Take heed to the first part. Walk in repentance. Walk in the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Walk, bask in the everlasting gospel, the message of that good news. And, of course, if one does not believe that, as P Pastor Miller put it in the People's Bible, here's a, a more general approach, a little wake-up call. Worship him who made the sky, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Look around you, unbeliever. Look around you. There's all kinds of witnesses to an awesome God whom you and I know. In fact, Romans chapter 1 says, there's so many evidences of our invisible God and his visible creation that people are without excuse except it's only the word of God, the everlasting gospel, that can turn a heart of stone into a believing heart that repents and treasures the Savior. 
I tried to help an uh, atheist friend of mine by telling him about the amazing camel. Do you know about the amazing candle, a camel? <laughs> this animal, it's got a hump. It's all fat, but of course, 80% water. This animal is the only animal that can go 30 days without drinking any liquids in the most intense temperatures in the Sahara Desert where it's 120 degrees during the day and it can get down to freezing at night. This is one tough animal. God's given him a tough mouth. This animal can chew on thorns and swallow it and be nourished. Amazing. And it can run like a horse 40 miles an hour. What an incredible animal. And I said, George, doesn't that make you believe? Nope. Ah. But we got some food for thought for George. Yes. So, dear friends, what a blessing is ours to treasure Jesus, to treasure the gospel, and don't let any persecution, harassment, whatever, get us down. It's for everyone. Let's be bold and courageous, like Luther, like those martyrs of old, the modern-day martyrs today, because that good news, that good news gives us joy, peace, and comfort for a lifetime and forever. Yes, praise God for the everlasting gospel. And let's be like the angel, messengers to everyone we can. Amen. And the peace of God, which is beyond our dreams, shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word, protected and comfort them in all temptations. Defend them against all their enemies and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we join in singing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, and we invite the congregation to arise when we come to verse 4.
clean with his good gifts and spirit and take they our life good stream child and wife though all may be gone our victory is won the kingdom ours forever. Hello, I'm Pastor Paul Shire. I, along with all of God's people here at Emmanuel Lutheran of Marshall Deerfield, are so very happy that you could tune into our service today. We pray it was a blessing for you. We pray your faith in Jesus, our Savior, grew, and your love for him and for others grew as well. We want you to know if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. We would be happy to include you in prayer if prayer is needed. If so, please contact me. My phone number is 920-723-1623. You can email me at pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, P.S. 1978 at gmail.com. Until next week, then. That's YouTube, Emmanuel Deerfield Lutheran Church. We pray that God will bless you.